Samuel, a dedicated man. Several hundred years after the Israelites had escaped out of Egypt and entered the promised land of Canaan, there lived a man whose name was Elkanah. This man had a wife named Hannah. Hannah had long wanted a child, and in her sorrow she often cried and wouldn't eat. When she and Elkanah went to worship at the tabernacle at Shiloh, Hannah prayed fervently to the Lord, saying, Lord, if you will give me a boy, I will give him to you all the days of his life. Eli, the high priest, saw Hannah's lips move, but hearing no words, he thought she was drunk. He spoke harshly to her until she explained. I'm not drunk. I've been praying to the Lord because my heart is full of sorrow. Well, then go in peace, and may the God of Israel give you what you ask of him. May you continue to be kind to me. And Hannah kept her promise to the Lord. When her son, whom she called Samuel, was still very young, she and her husband brought him to the house of the Lord, to Eli. I am the woman who prayed here. I prayed for this child, and the Lord gave him to me. In return, I'm giving him to the Lord as long as he lives. Then may the Lord reward you by giving you more children. And may this child become a great prophet and leader in Israel. So with a joyful heart, Hannah offered a prayer of thanks to God before going home with her husband, leaving Samuel to begin his life in the service of the Lord. The years passed, and under the guidance of Eli, Samuel eagerly learned the word of the Lord. And as the boy grew older, Eli came to appreciate more and more Samuel's love for the Lord, his ready obedience and devotion to his work. But how different were his own sons. Although Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests, they were men who despised God and caused the people to despise the worship of God in the tabernacle. But the day was coming when Eli's sons would be punished for their wickedness, as God was about to make known to Samuel. One night, soon after Samuel lay down to sleep, the Lord called to him. Samuel, Samuel. Not understanding that God was speaking to him, Samuel hurried to Eli. Here I am. You called me? No, I didn't call you, my son. Go lie down again. Once more, Samuel heard the voice calling him. 
Again he got up and went to Eli. But the priest, thinking that the boy merely had a dream, sent him back to bed a second time. Samuel. Here I am. You called? Go. Lie down. And when you are called again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Samuel. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Then God spoke to Samuel, telling him that Eli's sons would be punished for their wickedness. Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the sad news of the punishment God would bring upon his family. He lay awake the rest of the night. The next morning, however, Eli insisted on hearing what God had told Samuel. And when he heard what was going to happen, he knew in his heart that this was only just. His sons had been wicked, and he himself had sinned in being too lenient with them. It is the Lord. May he do what seems right to him. No. And Samuel grew, always serving the Lord faithfully. And God continued to speak to him. Soon, Israelites from every part of the country realized that Samuel was a prophet of the Lord. And it came to pass that the Israelites went to war against the Philistines. And because the tide of battle was going against Israel, Eli's sons brought the Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield, hoping that it would help save the Israelites. But the Philistines won a great victory. They killed Eli's sons and carried off the Ark of the Covenant. When Eli heard the news of the battle, how his two sons had been killed and the Ark of the Covenant had been taken, he fell from his seat and died. After the death of Eli, Samuel became the ruler of the people. For many years, he traveled from city to city, not only settling the disputes of the people, but urging them to serve God with all their hearts. For above everything else, Samuel continued to be a man dedicated to the Lord and a prophet and teacher of God's word. During the years that Samuel judged the people, the Philistines were pushed back from the land and their idols destroyed. So once again, the one true God was worshipped in the land of Canaan. Then one day when Samuel was old, the elders of Israel set out for his home in Ramah on an important mission. They wanted Samuel to give them a king to rule over them. For Samuel's sons, whom he had appointed judges over Israel, took bribes and were unfair and did not walk in the righteous ways of their father. When Samuel heard that the people wanted a king, he was very much displeased. Was not God their king? As in the past, when faced with a problem, Samuel turned to God in prayer. Then he began to point out to the elders some of the evils of having a king rule over the land. He will take your sons and make them work for himself. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your flocks, and you will be his servants. 
And then you will complain of this king whom you yourselves have chosen. But the Lord will not answer you. No. We want a king. We want to be like all the other nations. Our king will lease and fight our battles. When Samuel saw that the people were determined to have a king, he spoke again to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Do what they ask you, and give them a king. With a heavy heart, Samuel told the elders to return home and tell the people that they would soon have a king. The choice of a king was important, for it would affect the entire history of Israel. So once more, Samuel turned to God for guidance, and the answer came clearly. Tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to lead my people. The next day, Samuel saw two strangers entering the city. They were Saul of the tribe of Benjamin and his servant. They were far from home, looking for some donkeys that had been lost. Saul was very tall, a head taller than anyone else. And the Lord said to Samuel, There is the man about whom I told you. He shall rule my people. And Samuel spoke to Saul and invited him to eat with him and stay with him that night. The next morning when Saul and his servants started back to their home, Samuel went with them a short distance. After telling Saul to send his servant ahead, he said, Stand here a while that I may show you the will of God. Lord has now anointed you to be leader of his people, Israel. Thus the Lord chose Saul to be the first king of Israel. And Samuel gave Saul several proofs by which he would know that he was to rule the people of Israel. Later, Samuel called the people together and publicly introduced Saul as the first king of Israel, saying, See whom the Lord has chosen. Saul soon showed himself to be a great soldier. After a war with the Ammonites in which he led an army of 30,000 Israelites to victory, Samuel called the people together at Gilgal, where Saul was officially crowned King of Israel. This was an occasion of great rejoicing for the newly crowned king and the men of Israel. But Samuel warned the people, so saying, Now the Lord has set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord your God and obey him, and if you and the king will follow the Lord, then all will be well with you. But if you will not listen to the Lord and rebel against him, then he will be against you and will punish you. Now, therefore, pause a moment and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not the time of the wheat harvest? I will call to the Lord, and he will send thunder and rain so that you will see how wicked you were when you asked for a king. Then Samuel called upon the Lord, and he sent thunder and rain. When it was over, all the people feared the Lord and Samuel, 
very much. And they asked Samuel to pray for them. May I never sin against the Lord by no longer praying for you. And I will go on teaching you all that is good and right. Only fear the Lord. Serve him faithfully with all your heart. And consider all the great things he has done for you. But the time came when King Saul willfully disobeyed the Lord. Just before a great battle with the Philistines, he became impatient and offered a sacrifice for the success of his army in battle without waiting for Samuel to arrive, even though he knew that God had forbidden anyone except his priest to do such a thing. What have you done? You took so long in coming, and I feared the Philistines would attack us. I was forced to do this. You did a foolish thing. You did not do as the Lord commanded. Because of your disobedience, God will take away your kingdom and will appoint another king to lead his people. One who obeys him in every way. But Saul continued to ignore Samuel's warnings. And Samuel was saddened by Saul's unfaithfulness to the Lord. Then one day, God spoke to Samuel. How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king of Israel. Fill your horn with oil. I am sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem because I have chosen one of his sons to be the king. So with Saul rejected, Samuel made ready at once for the journey to Bethlehem to anoint a second king, a man after God's own heart. Here was a man completely dedicated to the Lord, a man who knew the will of God and did it. As a boy in the tabernacle, as a leader of God's people, as a teacher of God's word, as a prophet and a maker of kings.